Portland is an undeniable tiny house hotspot here in the USA, so it should come as no surprise that it's also home to a lot of innovation. Today we've traveled to see an incredible tiny house project that's packed with some truly ingenious ideas. Hey, good hey. to meet you, mate. Good day, Cody. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Guys, this house is off the hook. Thank you. What actually inspired you to build a tiny house here in your backyard? We couldn't build a tree house here. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we wanna we just wanna build and we thought building a tiny house would be cool, so we went yeah. for it. Yeah, we wanted to buy some land and build a tree house, but neither of us had enough money for land, so we already had the backyard, already had the cement pad and started building. Two friends building a tiny house together. That can definitely make or break relationships. What was it like working on this project together? Well, basically, I'm an engineer and he's more of a creative type. So if anything looks good, you can blame him. If anything works well, it's probably my fault. And if something doesn't work well, it's probably his fault anyway. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> So, so one thing that happens with us working together is a discussion can take a long time. And if I don't feel like waiting a long time to figure out how we're going to do something, I don't talk to Cody and I just do it by myself. And then he comes back and he's like, okay, I guess this is how we're doing it. You know, friendships are built on shared experience and it's hard to have uh, more of a shared experience than building something like this with just the two of you and a little help from your dad. Yeah, um, and your bedroom's like right next to my bedroom now. Yeah. <laughs> so we both come out of the same house to work on this house and it's like 50 feet away. But um, one of the things that's been fun is that we, I think we complement each other in the way that we work and uh, we definitely both respect one another. I'll speak for Cody that he respects me. I have no idea, but sounds good. You'll never know. <laughs> That's probably because Cody doesn't talk very much and he can, he has like a lot of patience for me who talks a lot and he's mm. ridiculously awkward and I'm like really patient with awkward people. Yeah. And I need some entertainment, so that's why I have him. <laughs> so how big is this tiny house actually? Uh, well, it's on a 24 foot trailer and it's the legal width limit of eight and a half feet wide. So it's about 200 square feet with a footprint, um, but we've got a six foot loft on the back end and a four foot loft on the front end and a net going between the two. So we more or less double that uh, square footage. It looks like you've used some super interesting woods in this project as well. So this is all cedar that we got from um, this woman who actually gets her cedar from the mills nearby. And so if you look around, there are some spots that have little dings in them. And for that, we got a full pallet, a pallet yeah. for a lot cheaper than you would at your local hardware store. And we Shosugi bond the whole thing. So I think it was you came up with the S'more Life. Yeah, we sort of have this theme, S'more Life. And so everything's supposed to look like a marshmallow that's being held over a fire. So this end's a little darker and it gets lighter on that end. And then it's just cedar over there. And then we burnt um, all the edges, yeah. but it's already taken a lot of sun. So it's harder to tell. Awesome. Well, I absolutely love the way that it looks on the outside. Can you show me through the inside? Definitely. Sure. Come on in. All right. Thank you. This is seriously cool. The net. What a cool idea. Yeah. What actually gave you the idea to do this? I came across the net at another Airbnb or a rental house in San Francisco years ago and always thought that I wanted it somewhere in one of my houses. So when Cody and I started coming up with ideas, I said, we need to have a net. He said, okay, we can do that. And we've literally designed everything around the idea that this net was gonna go here. And just from a design perspective, it works so well as well because you can still see right the way through to the ceiling so you don't lose any perception of space inside the house, but you've actually gained a lot of usable floor area. Yeah, it's basically like having a really big hammock that you can lay down anywhere on there and instantly be comfortable. And so we've entered into your kitchen space, but you do have two potential entranceways in the mm -hmm. home. Right. So can you tell me a little bit about the design of the kitchen? Yeah, we wanted a big kitchen, just a lot of space. And I don't know, there was something about the bathroom being on one side and we knew we wanted to have the dining nook on the other side. So that kind of left the kitchen 
being on this side. Um, and we just like how it turned out. The long kitchen's just a nice space. Yeah, and then we also found this gigantic window <laughs> at a, a discount window place. All of the windows here are overstock windows, including the skylight. So we got a great deal and we designed around the windows basically. So with this big window here, made sense to put a counter here, the stove and the, the vent there and yeah. Yeah, we sort of knew that we wanted this space over here to be a lounge area. I'd come across a picture of a small space that I really liked and designed a lot of the house off of this space and then transitioning into this space. So we put in this bench to kind of connect to the countertop and my dad's helped a lot with some of the cabinetry and whatnot. So he helped us put in this table, which flips up, up and down. And then from there, we made the lounge area, which also turns into a dining nook, but it has um, a lot of different functions. So the table flips out and turns into a bed. And then we can flip this back up. So now we've got it set so two people can sit across from each other and enjoy a meal. But we've also built it. So this piece goes up through. Connects here for four people. That is a very clever design. And what a great way of just completely opening up the space and really just creating a comfortable space to hang with friends. I love it. Yeah. And as with any tiny house, of course, everything has storage in it. So all of these lift up for storage in the stairs. There's a lot of storage, storage everywhere. So we've got this lath art. The lath comes from uh, inside old Portland houses and we needed it for our outside siding and we used the leftovers to build these art projects, which you'll see in the bathroom and here and there. So should we go take a look at the bathroom? Absolutely. Let's do it. That looks really great. Can you explain to me a little bit about this lath art and what it really is? Yeah, so lath is what used to be built into old houses. If you've heard of lath and plaster, what they did is got wood with little slits in it and then you put plaster on it and it hangs there. So now we use drywall. And so when you take out lath and plaster, you put up drywall and all the lath comes out. And here in Portland, a lot of people try to save this stuff so other people can reuse it. So this likely came out of a house that was built in the early 1900s and I like that it's being reused and it's being visible instead of inside a wall, it's outside a wall. And can you tell me about the layout of your bathroom? Well, we have a, a, I think it's a 32 inch square shower pan and that had to go in one corner and the toilet in the other. And you've put a composting toilet in? Yeah, it's a nature's head. It's uh, most tiny houses that I know of have composting toilets and that seemed like the best option. Excellent. Well, I am dying to get up there and yeah. give this net a try. Can we move up? Yeah, let's do it. Yep. Okay. Wow. This is seriously cool. Especially having the skylight there, it just completely makes this feel like a luxury space, doesn't it? Yeah, it's really cool and I'm glad you guys came on a rainy day because it's pretty neat to get to lay underneath the skylights under the rain. So when you were designing this space, what were the elements that you absolutely had to have in here? I think the, the biggest and maybe the, the only thing that we absolutely had to have was the net and trying to figure out how to lay out the space and how to create the openings and how that was all going to be attached and secured and um, a nice big open space. Yeah, one of the fun things to figure out was how people at our height would walk up the stairs without hitting their head in the net. So we had to get this exact cut out and every, the angles you can see go, you know, climb up from the loft and then climb down on the other side because one loft is slightly higher than the other. So this isn't just a rectangle net with two rectangle holes and it. it is designed specifically for this space. So as this space is potentially going to be used as an Airbnb, it's a really great design because you could actually sleep a lot of people up here, couldn't you? We could. <laughs> I, I don't know that we want to uh, open this place up to having a, a group of eight or ten people staying in here. You know, it is a tiny house. But you can definitely, you know, we built this loft to be able to hold a king. We'll probably put a queen here. We carpeted that side so it could be sort of a lounge, but it can hold a twin. And then you could definitely yeah. have a person or two sleep out on the net if you wanted to. How many do you think this could actually hold? I think safely it could easily hold 
up to four people. It, I'm sure it could hold more, but I wouldn't want to push it more than that. Spoken like a true engineer. Yeah. I think it could hold like 12. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere I look, there are really nice materials and really clever design elements. What are some of your favorite aspects of this space? I really like the floor, even though it took us way too long to make. Uh, the yeah. floor is actually made out of an old rain cover that used to be over this RV pad. So we disassembled that and then did end grain cuts and then hand sanded every single tile and then stained it, saved sawdust, turned it into grout and laid the whole floor down sanded that down and then stained the whole thing. So it was a long process. We probably wouldn't do that again, but uh, it was cool. Then the ladder over there is made out of the first salvaged wood that we got before we even got the trailer. And uh, we just put it in so it was fun actually getting to use something that we saved from so long ago. And the countertop is a door that came from my house that we weren't using and we cut out a spot for the sink and then we did a layer of cement over that to build that. Um, the cabinets I started to build, then my dad came and saved the day and said, I'll finish these for you, <laughs> and did all the cabinetry, all the doors, the drawers, um, including on the stairs. And I think that's all the things that I really like. There's no question that a tremendous amount of time and effort has gone into building this space. What about the cost of a project like this? Well, the biggest cost is obviously labor. Um, but in terms of materials, I've been doing the accounting and I think we're about uh, a bit under $25,000 um, for all of the materials, including the trailer. That is a really astounding result considering not only the finish, but also all of the innovation in this space. Yes, uh, it's all about, I guess, finding the materials that you can at a good price from uh, the reused materials at the rebuilding center and the restore and then uh, figuring out once you have the materials what you can do with them. So having now almost completed this space, is there anything that you'd want to change about your design? I don't think so. This is, it's functional in the way that we want it to be. I think it feels like a place that you'd want to come stay for a few nights. It, it wasn't designed to be somebody's home long term. I think it could transform into that for sure for somebody, but um, this is definitely a place that I'd want to come visit. This whole space is super creative. I love all of just these ingenious elements like this hammock that you've actually put in this house. I want to shake your hands for this amazing project, but honestly, I'm just too comfortable right here in the hammock. So congratulations to both of you on this amazing project. Yeah. Thank you. I, I wish you could stay forever, but I'm sure you got other places to be. Well, I don't know. If you guys can pay for a couple nights of rent, we could use the cash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Recoup some of the build costs. Yeah. <laughs> this tiny house is a great example of teamwork really paying off. The loft net, for example, has to be one of the coolest things I've seen in a tiny house so far. And I think it really goes to show that just because you're designing a small space, it doesn't mean you can't include some really big ideas.